Would you do what Deborah does? Which is? Poppies. As, as my father put, <laughs> that I heard, uh, I'm not quite as built as Deborah is. They're just smaller puppies, that's all. But thank you, you don't have to uh, elaborate. <laughs> They're cute. Examples include... Did he just... Did Shane just say Stephanie's puppies were cute? What? Y'all let me know if I heard that correct. What's good, y'all? Will Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out 10 wrestlers who got legitimately pissed in an interview by Wrestling Flashback. This should be a very great one. Don't piss off a wrestler, y'all. Don't be disrespectful. Don't try to shit on the wrestling business because there's a good chance that said wrestler will show you how real it can be. How, uh, you know, how they can turn up on you. How, you know, sometimes people, I think, get this misconception of wrestling that it's fake and all this other stuff and it's like now nah, these people can get hurt these people are out there entertaining us putting their lives on the line and you disrespect them in an interview you may get jacked up simple as that so we're gonna check out some of these moments man appreciate all love support let's get right into this one this should be a good one is this son yeah. Say it again! I dare you to say it again! Randy. Call me fragile! I will headbutt your teeth through your- I believe this was uh, actually like uh, like a work shoot. Like this was planned, so. But still, nevertheless, it, it, it <laughs> definitely look intense though. Skull. Historically, it was rare to see wrestlers being interviewed on widespread media unless it was tied to controversy. No one would believe me if I came through with this seven years ago. We had uh, consulted with Mr. McMahon about the advance immediately. He's just been denying everything. I didn't wait one minute. Such controversy usually led to some eye-opening interviews, a number of which we'll be highlighting today. You're just so big, and <laughs> you come out of the world That's of pro wrestling. <laughs> We're done. I have never failed a f***ing drug test. I injected Hogan with steroids many times. Many times. Many, many times. A dozen Hundreds times. of times. Hundreds. Hundreds. As we cover 10 of Damn. the wildest mainstream wrestling interviews. Because... <laughs> We'll be right back after this word from you know who. My the man was. Thought, I'm happy to. My man was sleep. Oh, he was sleep. On today's list is appropriately sponsored. Shout out to my. Uh, shout out to the homie, man. Get your get your ad. Get your get your money, man. You deserve it. All right, let's check this one out. One way to upset wrestlers in an interview is by questioning if the sport they do is real. Yep, I just said it. One similar to it have been asked in a few different mainstream interviews. How much Zero. None at all? Nothing. I broke so many people's thumbs because I would explain to them, you know, listen, you can't see pain. You can only feel it. I think this is fake. You think it's fake? Class. Bop. <laughs> it's not funny to get insulted, but I ain't gonna lie to you. This is one of the most infamous clips. You think it's fake? He slapped the dog piss out of him. Is that fake? You think it's fake? You come oh my god they say this wrestling is not no. for real you act or the does that fucking feel fake huh does that feel fake but for this entry we're going Don't back do that. to 1999 mm -mm. when the stars of wcw appeared on bill myers politically incorrect show oh, myers started the interview no. off on a bad tone as he yep. arcadely raised suspicions over wrestling's legitimacy people know that you're not really beating each other up okay that, let's just we got a lot of stuff right there. there the wrestlers shut bill down straight out you're telling me that you're is... really hitting each other when a metal chair cracks your back that's not fake with roddy piper in particular putting Meyer firmly in his place there's so never a bruise no. on any of you. See that wrist? Seven years it's been broken. Owen Hart, dead. Why don't you go tell Mrs. Hart what a joke it is? Maya then shifts Ooh. gears, saying how the violence. Respect, man. Oh my God, man. Nah, don't don't do that, y'all. I, I I don't do that, y'all. Tell this. Tell them it's fake while they're in the hospital. Dealing with an injury. Because if it's fake, then no one should get injured, right? Right? That's all I'm saying. Since in wrestling sets a bad example for audiences, to which Bobby the Brain Heenan responds with a fun point. How about Popeye cartoons? Here's a guy that doesn't speak English well, rips open a can of spinach, and then knocks out a big guy. That's how they end the show. Maya concludes the segment with a new appreciation for wrestling he clearly didn't have before. 
I, you know what? You guys have me. I don't know what's real and what's not. In it. <laughs> Michael Landsberg That's how you do it. some great out of character wrestling interviews on TSN's Off the Record in the late 90s and early 2000s. Would you do what Deborah does? Which is puppies. As as my father put, <laughs> that I heard, uh, I'm not quite as built as Deborah is. They're smaller puppies. That's all. Yeah. But thank you. You don't have to uh, elaborate. <laughs> They're cute. Examples include when Hulk what? Hogan and Mick Foley threw shots at. Wait, whoa, 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 wait. What the fuck? What the fuck did he just? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Record in the late '90s and early 2000s. Would you do what Deborah does? Which is puppies. As as my father put, <laughs> that I heard, uh, I'm not quite as built as Deborah is. They're, They're just smaller with puppies. That's all. Yeah. But thank you. You don't have to elaborate. <laughs> They're cute. Examples include. Did he just? Did Shane just say Stephanie's puppies were cute? What? Y'all, let me know if I heard that correct. I just want to make sure I heard that correct, cause that's. That's very weird to be saying that about your sister. Alrighty then. I'm just gonna. When Hulk Hogan and Mick Foley threw shots at each other in separate interviews. I would probably say I've trained more in the last week than Mick Foley's trained in 30 years. I went ahead while Mick Foley was sleeping and eating cheeseburgers and M&Ms. I was in the gym working out. I think if Hulk Hogan were to have wrestled me, he would sound more or less like a whiny girl in a porno film saying oh. not so fast and not so hard because he didn't like the contact. One of Landsberg's best interviews. Wow, my boy Mick said, hey, you got me Fucked up, Hulk Hogan. Fuck you. <laughs> was with CM Punk after Punk had agreed to fight in the UFC. I hope you don't find this disrespectful, but have you actually taken a real punch? You're going to ask me if I've ever taken a real punch in the face? Yeah. You obviously hadn't seen some of the guys I was wrestling in the WWE. Landsberg poked fun at Punk to try and get the Chicago native to fire back, given the Second City Saints as spoken reputation. Are you kind of pissed off at the questions that I've asked? Uh, they're very wrestling-centric, and, you know, I'm here to talk about UFC. You have an agenda. It's okay. Oh, well, I don't have an agenda, but what am I going to ask you about UFC? You're not a UFC fighter. You don't have a fight schedule. It seemed to work as Punk ultimately called out Landsberg for how the host was behaving. But you try to be friendly. You try to act like you're my friend. And then when you get me on camera, you try to act like the cool kid in school. So you want to play in, you want to play innocent and defensive when what, you're I, not on camera. And then when you get on camera, you want to, you want to act like you're hot. Landsberg in turn threw shade at Punk for drinking coffee outside the interview as a segment came to a close. And it is disrespectful somewhat to be drinking coffee or tea while you're in the middle of an interview. I don't know if you do that all the time, but I, I, I got to stay awake on TSN. I need my caffeine. Bro, Next what type of, man, if you don't shut up. CM Punk handled that way better than I probably would, bro. I'm like, bro, you're, this is over. You're being an asshole. You weren't talking like that. I have the text messages. I remember the phone calls. It definitely wasn't like this. You definitely weren't asking questions like this. You definitely didn't say you were going to talk about this in the way you're talking about it. I know you're full of shit. I hope the ratings bump you get temporarily boost your fucking ego. I'm done with this. <laughs> like, but I, but I would have went off like, kick rocks, bro. Look at a case where a wrestler felt he was asked to appear on a show under false pretenses. As Diamond Dallas Page was interviewed on Nancy Grace in 2014 to talk about the sudden death of the Ultimate Warrior. Instead of celebrating the Warrior's life, which DDP believed he was going on the show for, Nancy tried to connect the Warrior and other wrestlers' premature deaths to steroid usage. Oh. He's a used yeah, back in the day, a lot of we all used them back in the day. But whoa, I mean, whoa, whoa, whoa! No, we didn't. Oh, I mean, I've never oh, used steroid. I, Why do so many die at such a young age? I mean, you've yeah, got you've yeah. got to take into account the steroids and drugs. Well, for starters, you know, I think you have to look at where it is today. On Sam Roberts' Sirius XM show, Paige later noted how upset he was after being set up by Grace. Because I was so pissed. How far into the interview did you realize, ugh? Oh, pretty quickly. Oh. She started talking about the steroid scandals and blah, blah, blah. Like, wait a minute, that was... 25 yeah. years ago. What do you do after the show? Like, what do you do once once the segment's over? And she goes, well, thank you, Dallas, for joining us. But I know I said something in a way of, like, go fuck yourself, but I didn't say that. Sam Roberts <laughs> addressed the first claims made by Nancy.
Nancy during his interview with her. Steroids weren't involved in the Ultimate Warrior's death. No, they were not. A lot of wrestlers see your report and come back at you with venom, saying you're not representing us, you're not telling our story, and this what you're portraying isn't what's happening. And I'm sorry they feel that way. But I really I, don't know what else you want me to say. Something Grace didn't take kindly to. You uh, haven't asked saying... one decent question since I walked in here. Everything you, both of you have asked has been an attack. I think our time is up. Bye-bye. Oh, take care. You can leave if you want. Don't worry, we're not going to kill ourselves after the interview. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> okay. The Benoit family. So you do the same thing to an actual former wrestler, but then when they're grilling you about how you was asking people, a former wrestler, not to celebrate his life, but you're bringing up old steroid usage in relation to his death. What do you mean, what you want me to say? No, you could have talked about his life. That's what you brought him on, to talk about his life, to celebrate his life. Why did people do that? I want you to understand that. People do that. They will sit up there and find anything to bring up your past transgressions after you've died. Instead of celebrating your life, there were a group of individuals out there, and a lot of them are in the media, that would do whatever it takes to get bring up old shit after you've died just to slander your name. Fuck her, bro. Family tragedy was also linked to steroid use, leading to a who's who of wrestlers appearing on mainstream uh -huh. TV to discuss the events of what transpired and the possible motives. Chris Benoit asked for time off last year, four months. He was given four months off. But what anybody wants to say, if he had any problems, he could have taken care of them in those times. He could have asked for help. If he chooses not to ask, because nobody else can help him. As you sit here and deny that you've ever seen any sort of uh, kind of ro roid rage, uh, which also seems to kind of stretch credibility but uh what what if in fact that it does come back have you ever taken that it steroids was, that it was because of steroids then i'm asking you have you ever taken steroids no i have not taken steroids so, so, she can prove it because so, uh, i don't you get that muscular thing thank you very much kevin i'm for just being saying with us. i'm just saying you're, you're you're doubting my credibility i've taken them and i haven't seen it right, so we thank you i know that's not time, what Jeff. you want to hear sure. you, 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 you let me finish you stop interrupting me for a second why don't you sit here and keep interrupting me like this did What's you ever that? take steroids ever? <clears throat> It was a topic that caused much debate uh -huh. and led to various wrestlers getting big heat with WWE due to their comments. If he was using steroids, he had passed the drug test. So maybe he injected steroids the day before he died. Okay. I don't think the to toxicology reports are actually going to prove anything. A Vince McMahon is happy to put his trademark on you and own you. Damn. And I don't think he hasn't taken res enough responsibility. And from what I know of him as a person, he's not been a very kind uh, gentleman that deserves my respect, I'll tell you yeah. that. I think Vince needs to definitely enforce the drug policy more than what he's doing. Vince McMahon has got to show character, step up to the plate, and admit there's problems in the world of professional wrestling and do something about it or we're going to start seeing hearings on Capitol Hill. Including a No, there, there, there's... Yeah. Some of these people make some great points. Obviously, it's to pile on after what happened with, uh, you know, uh, Chris Benoit. But, you know, Vince was all about, at one point, and at one point, it was more, it's just making sure people looked like superstars. And sometimes that means by any means, even if it was under the table, even if it wasn't healthy to the said wrestler, it's all about making people look like superstars and bringing in the most money. So, number of former talent and even one current star that came out of the woodwork to weigh in on the matter. It's easier to say or point out the number of guys that aren't doing steroids than those that are. The drug test is a ruse. It's an artifice designed specifically for these sensationalized, high-profile tragedies. It's, it's disingenuous to say that you don't believe that there is suspected uh, steroid use within the wrestling community. No, I didn't and you say that, well, What are you saying then, sir? I didn't say that. Sure. Vince McMahon has certainly given some unique interviews over the years, such as his infamous discussion with Playboy magazine. He alludes to his mother sexually assaulting him. He alludes to being molested when he was six. He also has a history of getting riled up during interviews with the mainstream media. They, they were was part of your organization. They Wait worked a, a couple of hundred nights a year for you. Oh they lived this oh, life oh, 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 These individuals work for an organization at one time. 
They also work for other organizations. But perhaps Vince's most famous TV <laughs> interview was conducted by Bob Costas on HBO in 2001, where Costas went in on McMahon over the failure of the XFL. If you could be guaranteed that it would increase ratings, would you fix the games? What a ridiculous statement. Costas also lamented the WWF's raunchy storylines and their depiction of women crotch grabbing, people grabbing their crotches, pointing in that direction and saying suck it. 11 and 12 year old kids well, you know in the what, audience. Though, the conversation was incredibly heated with mm. Vince losing his cool over Costas constantly interrupting. Right. These things don't happen. They haven't happened. You, you want to let me finish here for a second, pal? Go shut your mouth and let me answer the question. All right? <laughs> I'll be you love. <laughs> this is me. When Vince get mad. <laughs> They start calling you pal. That's him. That's him, y'all. The character you see on screen, that was him seeping out. It's here, pal. <laughs> we gotta go back now. Right, <laughs> things don't happen. They haven't happened. You, you want to let me finish here for a second, pal? Go shut your mouth and let me answer the question, all right? I'll be happy to answer. I can back up and look timid. Or when he comes forward, I can come forward. And you notice there, I didn't really say anything, but I smiled at him. Mm. And that made him angrier still. I'm seeing myself, Vince, if he were only about 6'3", you would kill him. A karma Vince was interviewed <laughs> again by Costas a year later, this time with the XFL dead and the WWF now called WWE. He says McMahon likes to pretend that his product is sports entertainment, but it's really more of a violence variety show filled with state-of-the-art gay bashing, gang violence, spousal <laughs> violence, woman-on-woman -woman violence, sometimes in vats of pudding, and violence against animals. McMahon nearly got into it with Costas, but our next example goes one step further. We're talking about when Abdullah the Butcher was being interviewed on Canadian daytime TV in 2009. Abdullah proceeded to put his hands on presenter Derek Page, Whoa. with Abby cutting Derek's forehead till it bled by using a fork and plate. The attack was planned ahead of time where oh, Buster okay. Hannibal would make the save. What wasn't agreed upon was Abdullah making the host bleed. Legal oh. action was taken against Abby as a result of the incident. I didn't give him permission to cut me. I, I didn't have oh, to be shit. hospitalized, but he certainly surprised me on the show. We wanted him to replace my suit, and uh, we tried to contact his people and, and never heard back. Our next interview Damn. also includes physicality, but is much more lighthearted, as Chris Jericho appeared on TNT's Inside the NBA to promote AEW Full Gear 2019, with a ring being set up in the studio. Shaquille O'Neal and Charles Barkley were the real stars of the segment, however. Yeah, Shaq tried of multiple course. times to get at Barkley before eventually succeeding leading to a hilarious exchange Jericho was simply an onlooker as Kenny Smith and host Ernie Johnson also got in on the action. <laughs> Former Million Dollar Champion and NWO member Virgil gained a career resurgence hold on, hold on, bro. by hosting I'm sorry, I've Smith never seen this segment, Johnson bro. also got in on the action. <laughs> Former Million Dollar Champion and NWO member Virgil gained a career resurgence in the 2000s by hosting fans at conventions and autograph signings. You would recognize it more if it was on his back like that. <laughs> Virgil began to embrace his money-loving persona online, which included appearing on Sam Roberts' Sirius XM radio show from New York. Virgil had numerous outlandish appearances on the show, where he said crazy things. Where do I go? I still like to show this tight ass right here. Yeah, all right, he's showing off his ass again. I'm wrestling with guys that call... Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. You never Guy wrestled. Like Steve you, Austin. You did not. Yeah, yeah, yes, he did. Yeah. He wrestled The Rock. You did not yes, wrestle did. The Rock. Yes, he did. Did you make a horse noise? <laughs> <laughs> I will put my foot by my size 14 so deep in your ass and then I'll shove this 14 inch stick in your mouth. Gobble, motherfucker, gobble. Whoa. Played with women. Yeah, it's, 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 it's different on serious XM. You're, Shoe size is 14 and a half. Yeah, but and length of your penis is also same size. identical. Same size. So you identical. can get that foot in your ass or that penis in your mouth, which one you want. And even performed his own song. Fuck money, baby. Fuck money, baby. Green and black. Green and black. Like oh. my skin is green and black. Fuck money. 
Virgil's flirting with women. While Virgil's flirting was wild, it was nothing compared to the stuff John Cena said he got up to with women. When the WWE Champion was interviewed on Howard Stern in 2006, Cena talked about how he once got frisky with six women. It was me and six other girls. That's Get it. the hell out of here. And you were able to handle all hell six? Hell no, I wasn't able to handle all six. That was just too much. <laughs> he said that was and just how he had the much. best night of his life with two strippers. But it was uh -huh. every possible position that I wanted. Every best blowjob possible... of your life? Absolutely. I believe it. Absolutely. But perhaps the most crazy thing <laughs> John spoke about was the time he got it on with a 280 pound woman first it was kind of a, a challenge set out to me by the entire roster and it was like it was it was a thing where you won't do it but i said not only will i do it i'll enjoy it and i did it was a great night cena went into detail wow. after the host continued to probe him for more information because everybody can tell a story about the hot ones it takes a man's man to tell a true story about what really happened it really does John was also asked about Chris Canyon, who'd recently been on Stern in the weeks prior. Canyon's appearance was infamous after he claimed Vince McMahon was a homophobe, who fired Chris because he was gay. Had me dress up as boy George, oh. built a closet in the middle of the ring, had me come out of the closet, and The Undertaker beat the shit out of me. Do you really want to hurt me? Oh, damn! Cena refuted these claims, saying Canyon was released because he wasn't a good enough sports entertainer. Ric Flair was even more ruthless than Cena when Rick confronted Canyon over the phone, a week following Chris's initial appearance on Stern. I'm disappointed in Chris as a person. I've known him a long time that he would blame his shortcomings on uh, something that's going on in his personal life. WWE, I was even though you as a person, as a man, for blaming your choices in life on the business. That's not a choice. There have been Damn. plenty of other notable wrestler interviews on Howard Stern, which are infamous due to the situation Stern puts his guests in. And you cannot have anal sex with a woman because oh. you're too big, right? Oh, please. <laughs> That's a yes. Yeah. She got a vagina, right? And yeah. that's God given. You have a birth certificate to prove it, right, yeah, China? Sometimes I wish I had a penis so that you guys could suck it. Oh! Wide on. I want to talk to you about Playboy and the pictures, and I have questions for you about your uh, pubic hair. I have a lot of questions. Well, there are questions. Yeah. How about you get in bed with me and give me sexual intercourse? So you're married. I don't want to. Oh, two I years get from now, we'll be having the same interview we <laughs> it's had. It's going to be a great interview. I can't wait to hear it. Well, you know how things went wrong. Uh, you know. well, something to talk about. We've been there a few times. It's just an ass it. shot. You, you got a great oh, ass. You got a great ass. You got a great, great ass. ass. Bro, this. <laughs> My man. Howard Stern literally could say whatever the fuck he wanted to, bro. He's <laughs> You're five. doing lingerie wrestling I, matches. That's <laughs> Your mother. Hey now, how's it going? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, how you doing? Uh, yeah. Were you a sex addict? Would you say? Hmm. I don't know. All guys are sex addicts. Yeah, I think so. Other examples include when Stephanie McMahon. Oh, he's definitely a sex addict, y'all. <laughs> he's definitely paying for that hush money. <laughs> was asked about the ins and outs of her relationship with Triple H. Has Triple H tried to give you anal? Um, he, I'm sure he'd like to. He'd like to, but uh, you won't go there. I, I probably will at some point. When Golders came on after contracting Tourette due to being electrocuted. All they know is uh, some kind of ooh, ooh, some uh, neurological <laughs> disorder, you know? And then you um, got electrocuted up your butt? <laughs> ha, 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 Grand Canyon, Grand Canyon. <laughs> you were like, I guess, sort of gay. And really? And you used to have crushes on other wrestlers, like you had a crush on Razor Ramon? <laughs> Wait a yeah. second. Well, maybe the electrocution was a good thing. <laughs> and we can't forget whenever the Iron Sheik would stop by. Bitch, cunt, I'm a legend before that jabroni, and I put my talent cock in your fucking ass. The Sheik was known to trade verbal jabs with whack pack regular Beetlejuice. He said his face. Oh my Hello? God. Hello? Hey, 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 hey. So like a fucking crybaby. <laughs> Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our similar video on 10 dark moments that WWE want you to forget. Have a great Oh my god. <laughs> this was just wild, bro. Very wild. I'm still very confused on that Shane and Stephanie clip. That was weird. Very, very weird. But comment down below. Let me know if you guys have seen any other interviews um, where, where wrestlers getting interviewed and they getting pretty upset at what 
the interviewer <laughs> is asking them uh, and uh, you know what questions they're being asked i'm sure there's more clips out there but i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k and i'm still here on speed of youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all next one peace